Hello everyone, Simon here again with our trade and we're having our weekly webinar and it called your weekly trading plan. And um, before I go any further, I will uh, read the risk warning, which is very, very important. Any capital markets and trading information disclosed in this webinar is provided for informative purposes only and should not be construed or applied as investment advice, a recommendation or suggestion. CFDs are complex instruments and come with high risk of losing money rapidly due to leverage. 71% of retail investors accounts lose money when trading CFDs with this provider. You should consider whether you understand how CFDs work and whether you can afford to take the high risk of losing your money and you can read the full disclosure statement on avatrade.com official website. So uh, again, you can contact us at Twitter at avatrade and of course visit our YouTube channel and you have a lot of information including trading and platform tutorials, fundamental analysis videos and technical analysis videos. And this is our agenda for today. Um, we'll start with Forex and dollar index first, and then we'll go to indices. Then we'll move to commodities and finish with stocks. And um, let's, before we go, I'm going to switch to the platform so we can start looking at the charts. Okay, so this is our platform. And uh, as I said, we will start with dollar index and move on. So again, I hope uh, you had a great week in general and uh, you had succeeded in your trading. It was a very interesting week. And uh, just just to say something, it's important to keep in mind that we are finishing August and the last week of August is historically is the slowest week. What does it mean the slowest? It's um, a lot of people are taking breaks. So when I say people, we're talking about key players, uh, bankers, traders, uh, investors, and so on. So the liquidity is getting uh, week and you could probably see it on the markets and the markets are really not so active and another reason uh, for this inactivity is everybody's waiting for some kind of a decision or at least an, a specific announcement from the feds as far as the interest rate and as far as tapering so we did have a speech of uh, mr powell the chair of the Fed, and uh, for those of you who didn't follow, pretty much he did say or confirm that uh, the Feds are going to be moving into tapering, but he didn't say any specifics. He didn't mention any dates, and he didn't mention uh, the amount that they will be cutting off from purchasing the securities. And as of now, uh, the purchasing monthly of 120 billion in securities to provide liquidity to the market and to keep the interest uh, level low. So we'll see what happens. And uh, fundamentally, we should keep in mind that the upcoming week is very, very important because uh, last announcement we had for July, we had a very strong employment data and lower unemployment and this is a key aspect that the feds are looking for in their decision making so we'll be everybody's been watching what friday the 3rd of september will bring as far as uh, uh employment how many people were hired and the level of unemployment and so on uh, and uh, some analysts are saying if the employment data is very strong that we should expect the announcement on the September meetings as far as starting the tapering. 
and they say that if the data is weak, that we could expect the announcement uh, two months later, which would be uh, in November. So this is a very, very important announcement as it is very important all the time, but this time uh, it's very, very uh, crucial what the employment data will bring. So we'll all be watching for Friday announcements. Okay, so let's uh, start with dollar index. And we did have uh, a weak um, move. I mean, the move down at the previous week after the move up to the uh, to the level here, 93.45. And on the daily chart, you could see it nicely as we went below the level and continued lower. So if the dollar index continues lower this week 9250 would be a level to watch on daily chart and uh, let's see how the price action what's happening on this level here if we're holding it and uh, confirm the support we, we can turn around and continue higher again just to zoom out on the weekly chart we try to get out of this level 93.45 to potentially move higher to the higher levels and we did the week before but we're coming back again to retest it so this is something very very interesting uh, i want to bring to your attention two pairs that uh, we actually were looking for potential moves and here they are that's the usd i'm sorry the euro nzd of the beautiful resistance here at 171.22. We made about 400 points, 400 pips here. No, I'm sorry, 300 pips, 71.22 to 68.19, about 300 pips move. It was very nice, as you could see here, with, with these tails, we established the level, we confirmed the level here, and we continue lower, beautiful trade. And, and Euro, Aussie, similar idea not as strong as New Zealand dollar, but it's very, very strong move. And these were very nice trades if you were prepared and you had the plan for this. And let's go through the major pairs, just see what potential could be coming. This is the pound dollar. We on the way to retesting 138, we could see it coming weekly it was a strong week on the up week like we said the dollar was selling so pretty much uh, all the currencies went up so the pound is on the way to retest possibly 138 well, let's see what happens there usd cad we said it was a super robust week up and then we were selling the most of the week and uh, we we are kind of playing with this level here 126 and a quarter 126.25 we're trading below it let's see if we come back about this level for a potential move higher or if we establish a resistance here which so far we don't have enough this is the first dip here if we start closing lower here we could see the move lower in usd cat and euro dollar, we bounce from 117.34 here. We confirmed this level on the last day on Friday. It's a strong day on Friday. And we on the way to retest 118. 118, 118 or five. So should we break this level here and establish some kind of a support and we start closing about it, we opening space for a potential move higher for 118.50, 119, and potentially even higher than that. And let's take a look at Aussie dollar. Aussie dollar is on the way to retest 1.3770. This is the level that we're playing around. And then we had a strong sell from here. So we're on the way there. This is the daily chart. And NZD, USD, similar idea. We had a lot of action in this range, and then we broke below, and we went straight up pretty much. So uh, 0 0.70, 0 0.70, 27 area here, 
would be a possible resistance with about 15, 20 pips to that level. So it's gonna be very interesting to watch. And let's take a look at uh, Norwegian Krona. It was very strong. US, USD knock had very strong move down here and we are at key levels here. So take a look, why is it key level? We had a lot of action around this level here. We bounced from it here. We had few attempts to touch it over here and we had on the weekly chart, two tails hitting that level around 8.71, 8.72. And we are currently closed on the daily chart. You look very nice. We see all the tails hit that limit here. So we closed lower. If we continue and and have some kind of a confirmation on on this level becoming a resistance until now it was to support for a while, then we could see a move down. And we mentioned, I believe last week that uh, Norway is uh, planning on increasing the interest rate uh, in September. So that would be uh, adding value to Norwegian Krona. And we could see uh, this instrument, USD not continuing lower, but again, we'll see how this level plays. It's going to be very interesting to watch. And the last pair we'll be looking at is USDZR, South African rent. And uh, we we reaching the level, we actually touched it on the daily chart, 14.68. And we held that level as a support. So again, on the weekly chart, you can you can see how we play around this level along the way, which establishes as a strong level. Then we came below it, then we came straight above on the strong week here, and then we sold out the last week. So let's see how this level holds. Again, it's 14.68. If we start establishing a strong support here in price action, we might continue to the way higher and we do have a lot of space here okay we can go retest 1550 1650 17 and so on potentially again uh, if uh, actions of the feds will be supporting and the interest rate possibly kicking in on the high side we could see dollar getting stronger and that would bring this pair to the uh, high to the moves higher so that's it pretty much with uh with uh, dollar index and the forex pairs, and we'll move into indices, and we'll start with S&P 500. Um, I have no words. We we're moving, and nothing is stopping the markets with all the COVID, with all the things, uh, and the Feds uh, with their possible actions. The market is just going higher again. You can look at it in a different way. You can be a buyer and uh, people that were, they were buying all the way so far, they're right. You could be someone saying that we're gonna crash and hold it against you with some losses eventually be right. Uh, it's up to you, whatever you choose, uh, it's your decision. But eventually we might see some kind some kind of correction and they do happen once in a while but every correction followed by new high here this is the one of the previous week and take a look it followed by the new high here so s and p's um we, we're trading in this um in this range ascending channel and as as long as we're going higher, there's nothing stopping it. As they say, the sky is the limit. And let's see how this week is going to play. Again, I'm repeating myself uh, with the with the unemployment and employment data and this NFP numbers are very important. Let's see what happens. So this is the S&P 500. Dow Jones is the one that is kind of refusing to make new highs, and this is the third week we're trying it. Um, we didn't really get close to the previous two week highs. So Dow Jones is not as strong. And Nasdaq on the other hand, 
is super strong and is all time highs closing on the highs. Let's see what happens here. We can we can expect uh, anything and we'll be watching what happens here. Let's see at uh, the FTSE, the UK index is not as strong as the US indices and DAX, similar idea. DAX we had uh, two weeks ago was a new high and then we had a selling week and this week was a strong week on the up walk, up week but not that strong so we didn't break the previous week high and that's not so strong for the DAX. CAC 40 we had a sell-off after a robust move up and then we're trading in the lower part of the range so potentially it could be a candidate on the downside and nifty is the champion i don't know why and what they do there in india what's uh what's so much excitement about it but the stock market there is going higher so we'll be watching this on a potential uh resistance at some point and nikki after being weak as we said uh, he had a strong week and he broke the previous week uh, high which was uh, which is very bullish and uh, we'll be watching it on a potential move higher and this is the daily chart let's see how we break from this resistance here potentially going to retest the previous level here let's mark it 28,248 potentially going to that level and that's as far as indices and uh, let's move to commodities and we'll start with gold this is gold you know a lot of controversial ideas about gold as we know some say we're going to 2000 some say we're going to go and crash and so on so far the gold after sell-off is going higher and now the sell-off is going higher so i think the key level for gold is 1830 this is the weekly chart and take a look how we bounce from this level a few times one two three were the three attempts on the weekly chart close once one to each other and we closed this week at uh 18, 16, 80. So we're about uh, 14, 15 dollars from this level here. It's a very serious level, and we'll be watching. And this is the daily chart. You could see it clearly. We refused to break through it. We refused again, and then we sold out strongly on the daily chart. This was a very, very strong move, and then we managed. The buyers came in in this level, 16, 80. And they pushed it all the way up to 1800 and higher so it's a very strong sign that means that at each sell-off the buyers are coming in they're not letting it tank so we'll be watching this level again 1830 as a possible breakout or a possible selling short at this level 1830 with the potential moving lower and it could be anything. It could be a profit of $30, a profit of $60, whatever it is. Or on the upside, if we do start close about 1830, we could go higher and retest the level that we resisted over here, about 19,000 potentially. Copper. We spoke about copper. We said how it's connected to China situation and it was a sell-off on copper here and we found a, a support around 395 area over here take a look and we're on the way up and we possibly could be retesting we're not far from it uh, 436 437 area and let's see how the market reacts to that level there so that's on copper and uh, let's take a look at crude oil crude oil had a very nice recovery we sold out strongly here 
and then we came came up take a look on the weekly chart with a very strong week we closed higher than the previous week's high so we we just proved that this sell-off was a profit taking we came straight back up and we'll be watching what's next uh, on the daily chart uh, the 6950 70 area could be uh immediate level of resistance here let's see how we take that level if we refuse uh, to break through we could see a move back down to look for supports uh, we're not gonna guess we'll just watch what happens and uh, as we hear already at, at oil let's take a look at exxon mobile had a little recovery here and chevron had a little recovery here with oil moving higher so natural gas for some reason very strong remember we said the natural gas was catching up with oil but uh on the, on the oil recovery natural gas had a much stronger move higher Let's take a look not only in the last two days we broke to the previous resistance on the daily chart 412 we confirmed it with the following day and we closed at the highs it's a very very bullish move there and uh on the monthly chart it looks it looks uh very promising here uh it, it could be that we will decide to break this level and continue higher everything is possible i i don't know it's a lot of fundamental things um let's see what happens but uh first of all if we do cho choose continue going higher we probably would need to retest this level around 465 that's where we actually started to sell off so it could be a potential move to these levels here and let's see how it acts on those levels so that's natural gas and oil let's take a look at um, at soft commodities coffee and sugar continue going higher and this is the weekly chart after this correction and profit taking uh, last week was very very strong and we continue this move we could possibly look for some resistance it could be even the highs on coffee sugar similar idea on the daily chart take a look he, he actually strong it was a little bit of a correction here and then we're on the way to retest the, the recent highs and that's 2036 was the last week high or previous week's high so let's see how sugar is acting here but it looks very very strong uh wheat after a sell-off it didn't really move much high even though it was an up week but nothing much let's take a look on the daily chart we're sitting in this range here between 708 726 about 18 20 dollar range let's see which way we go corn corn looks very interesting this chart daily chart it, it looks very very interesting and i will explain let's take a look we came from these levels here we bounced we play around it then we had a strong accumulation here a long accumulation here let's take a look how many days it lasted it lasted about 40, 44 trading days, about two months. Two months we accumulated here and then we just broke through. We confirmed this level of support and we just went straight up. This was probably the strongest move in corn. I don't want to say ever, but it was a very strong move. From 556 to all the way, the high was here at 734. Huge move. Then we went to correction here retested these levels here and then we failed to make new high and then we went lower so take a look what happens here after all these moves we went lower we confirmed this range again as a support area here for about twenty dollars see the twenty dollar channel twenty dollar channel pretty much and now it looks like we're setting up for a similar move we failed to go here okay let's take a look on the length just for out of curiosity how many days we're building this yeah, about the same thing 43 44 days so it could be that 
two scenarios we have here. Two scenarios for the buyers. We could break through this level and continue going higher, closing these gaps and so on. It could be anything. And that would be good for the buyers. Now for the sellers, this could be something called head and shoulder. Where this is being a head, left shoulder, right shoulder, pretty much equal shoulders. And the neck would be probably this level here, 537. So if we refuse to go higher, we came to retest the low of this channel here, and we start closing below it, we could actually see a tremendous, it's gonna be uh, probably a long process, or it could be a quick process like this one, we don't know. And uh, we could see it uh, in the opposite direction to the downside, we could see this, uh pattern of head and shoulder playing out so something very interesting put it on your radar corn will be watching corn on a potential move either higher here or breaking the support and continue lower playing this pattern of head and shoulder very interesting soybeans soybeans we broke through the support over here and then the last week we came back above it. So this level is remaining to be support 1298 for potential move higher here on soybean. So that's as far as the soft commodities. And let's move to the stocks. Let's move to the stocks and we'll go through some tech stocks and others and let's see what this week might bring. And again, just to remind everybody, on the strong market, uh, sometimes even the weak stocks are going higher. Of course, the strong the strong ones are. And if the market is selling, even the best stocks will be sucked in, and the gravity will take to so just take 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 that into consideration. When trading stocks, you need to see in general what the market is doing. So let's start with Netflix. Netflix had a very strong two weeks. And we facing these levels over here, which we close above it. Take a look how many tails actually hit exactly that level around five, 555, 556. So we bounce from here and we had the drop of about $50. And then we had consolidation here and we went and we closed $2 above uh, with the tail higher. So if we stay in this area, it could open a potential for moving higher for Netflix here. And if we dip back in again and start closing below it, we could go and repeat this move down over here. So Netflix will be watching. And the weekly chart, you could see it as we, we, we keep on hitting these levels and uh, it looks strong, but it's still, uh, I think this is the first time in a while that we closed about it. So it's kind of bullish, but we still need confirmation on this. So Netflix will be watching at 556 level, A on the potential move higher and B on the closing lower and moving lower on that closing. Intel, Intel uh, had signed some contracts with the defense department on providing some specialized chips for them. And uh, on this news, after all this move down, Intel actually had a strong week. And we on the way to retest this level of resistance here around 54.38. We couldn't break it for a long time. And let's see if this time we'll come here and break. And if we do, it just opens the space for potential move higher to 56, 57, 58 area on Intel. We'll be watching that. Amazon, Amazon, after this recent sell-off, had a very strong week. And uh, something that contributed to it, in my opinion, is the fundamental thing. They, they made an announcement. They, they, they're looking or they're starting to build actually retail facility. They're moving into a retail business, not just internet retail, but physical locations. And uh, it looks like uh, this announcement threatened Walmart. 
because uh, I'll, I'll return to Amazon in a second, but I just want to show Walmart on the up market on that announcement. Walmart actually, after uh, good earnings and all the good news, it came, it came in. Take a look, a very, very strong uh, move to the downside. And a daily chart, you could see it, it came with the gaps and we closed on the low. So Walmart has the potential on moving lower here and looking for some supports and it could be even coming to 132 level here which was a strong resistance then became a support so we'll be watching walmart and let's go back to amazon 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 on this news could see a uh, retesting of 33.87. And if we break through this, we can go and uh, retest the previous highs. We'll be watching that. Okay, Cisco, something that caught my attention, Cisco after great news and everything else had a very strong move, but uh, the last three days it was selling off on the on the bullish market, on the, on the uh, Strong market, Cisco was pretty much weak. It, these are not huge numbers, but the fact is it was going lower. It could be a regular, of course, uh, regular profit taking and so on, but we'll be watching Cisco on how it's going to be acting uh, in the upcoming week because anything that is going down on the up market is a flag. So we'll be watching that. Uh, we spoke about Walmart. Let's go to Microsoft. Microsoft, uh, 30540 area uh, was hard to break. Take a look. That was the high of last week. And this week we touched it and we closed lower. So Microsoft is another one that shows a little bit of a weakness after the strong move. Of course, it could be a regular profit taking or it could be that uh the buyers are done at these levels and uh, they might uh, look into moving the stock lower let's see what happens this week but for now we're in this range 297 to 305 it's about eight dollar eight dollar range so what we want to see we want to see a closure below it 297 or we want to see it moving and retesting 305 again and let's see what happens there tesla Tesla is uh, ranging again. This is uh, one, two, three, four days of ranging. Um, as we know, Tesla sometimes has a tendency of coming out with surprises. So as of now, we are about the 697 area, which we we spoke about here. But we need, in order for Tesla to go any higher, we need to break 725, 727 area here and if that happens we opening up possibilities for moving higher and if we come in again below 700 or 697 698 we could see retesting the low of this channel around 627 we'll be watching tesla and gm it's trying to recover after this uh, recent move we spoke about it i don't know how strong that affected gm but we spoke about the recall of electrical vehicles as a threat to the fire, to the batteries and so on. Uh, the week was an up week, but not that strong. So we'll be watching uh, GM on the possible move higher to retest the level from which we broke down around 54.38 right here. So we'll be watching GM. Google uh, is all time champion. 28.78 and going higher nothing is stopping google not not even uh the case that opening up in the state and the government level as we said against the google and apple store for the apps uh let's see uh so far we're making new highs uh no sign of sell-off there apple on the other hand uh, is having a hard time and there were a few articles of analysts saying the 150 uh apple has a hard time of breaking and take a look on the weekly chart, a few tails closing lower. Uh, it could be that Apple is running out of uh, out of steam here. 
we'll be watching it again on really testing this level and and the longer we fail to do it we could see that uh, the buyers get tired and sellers come could come in and we could see a tipping over and moving lower in apple and uh, by the way um c of apple cook he just uh, received 750 million as a bonus on his 10 year anniversary as a ceo that's very exciting uh it's a nice bonus to receive so again apple 150 a uh, hard time to break and let's see what happens the upcoming week we could see uh retesting it again and if we fail to break above we could see a move to the to the downside facebook Facebook's on the way to retest the all-time highs. The strong week on, on Facebook, we crossed three weeks of uh, pretty much not doing much. And uh, 374, 375 area would be the one to retest. Take a look on daily chart, it looks very good. Let's see how Facebook is reacting to this level. Let's say 375 level. And if we break through it and start closing and open, opening uh, space to the new highs, and if we refuse to break through it, it will confirm resistance. So we'll probably slide lower from there. So that's Facebook. Uh, let's take a look at the pharmaceuticals, the active ones, Pfizer and uh, Johnson & Johnson, the providers of the vaccine. Pfizer at super move higher and they will been selling off on all the pros, all the good news and stock is selling off. I guess we're coming here to 46.30 retesting of the previous level from which we made highs. And uh, we're on the way there, we're about 20 cents away. And let's see how this upcoming week will play for Pfizer. So if we're holding this level, potentially we can bounce and go, go higher from here. And if we break through it, we can go retest the, the next level. It's like a dollar away, see if that one holds. So that's Pfizer. Johnson & Johnson actually is already coming or it came to this level of retest, 172.61. And this is the level of this spike here. And this is the confirmation of a support from which we made, we made to $7 move higher. So we, we're back at this level, which is gonna be very interesting to watch. This is the four hour chart. So we'll probably be playing with this level. And if we hold it, it will just open uh, an opportunity for buying and moving higher here. And if we start closing lower, we might see a move lower to retest the lower levels, about three, four dollar move to the previous level of support right here. And we'll be watch we'll be watching it and uh, let's see uh, the last one the uh, last sector we'll be watching the uh the financial ba banking statement is the jp morgan we spoke about it and we said that uh there was a sell off here we might see potential move lower but at the sector went higher we broke through this level of the the, the previous week's high and Let's in the daily chart. We hired in the previous resistance, so that potential we could go and retest these levels right here on the daily chart around 166, 167 area. That's JP Morgan. Goldman Sachs made an all time high again. And uh, after the one week of sell off, this last week was very strong for Goldman. We closed at the highs. So there's nothing that stops it. This is the monthly chart, nothing to stop it. This is all time high. So we'll be watching for possible continuation or if we dip below this level again, we could see a retracement and move lower from here. And the last one is Citigroup. It's not as strong. It looks like it's having a hard time breaking the 64, uh, 74 area. And uh, it's establishing the 6940 as a support. So we're trading between 6940 and 70, about $5 range. And let's see what happens. This could be a potential 
break out from here or if we refuse that will just continue to going lower and retest the levels and let's uh, look at two at two of the cryptos the bitcoin the famous bitcoin is having a hard time to break 50 so this past week as you could see the high was 50442 we had the tail up and currently we're trading around 49000 uh, there's, there are a few publications saying that if we, if we clear 50 and get some strength, this could be a beginning of the move towards 100,000. It could be possible. I don't know. But so far, we haven't closed about it, and uh, this is something to watch for. So we we do trade above 48,000. This is the level that we played around here. and um, it could be that we're moving higher from here. It could be that we'll be retesting and dipping lower again. We'll be watching it. And Ethereum as well, it's trading about this 3180 area that we said that we were playing, we're coming in and out again. And as of now, we're trading at 3244 and uh, potentially moving higher here if we're holding the level. Okay. And um, that's it pretty much. I uh, I want to wish everyone an amazing week. And uh, of course, enjoy a few days of the summer that we have left and uh, make a plan for your trading week, of course, and execute the plan. And of course, I always like to repeat it. Make sure that you control your risk when you trade and then you have a plan that covers everything, uh, your positions, your equity, your risk, and be safe when you trade. I wish everyone an amazing week. All the best, take care.